fans of This American Life will recognize this story, as it was the center of one of the show's best episodes. When young Bobby Dunbar, just four years old, wandered off from his family on a group outing, he was never seen again. It's possible he fell from a railroad trestle and drowned. It's also possible he was abducted by a strange man who was seen lurking in the area. But we'll likely never know, because authorities thought they found Bobby Dunbar and didn't realize it was another child, entirely who simply stepped into Bobby's life, until 2004, long after it would have been possible to solve the case. Mary Maroney, just two, is an example of a recurring motif in the Charlie Project's archives, families desperate for cheap child care during the Great Depression who simply trusted the wrong person. Maroney disappeared after her, parents allowed her to spend a day with a woman who called herself Julia Otis. A woman purporting to be Otis's cousin, later wrote to the family to say Otis was love-hungry, after the loss of a husband and child and that she would care for Mary. Mary has never been found, and would be in her 80s today. She may still be alive and have no idea who she is. The disappearance of Evelyn Hartley is straight out of a horror movie. The teenager was babysitting one evening, when she didn't call to check in with her parents at the appointed time. Her father went to check on her and found a completely locked house with the lights and radio, still on and no Evelyn inside. Signs of a struggle and forced entry, led to a desperate search for the girl, but she was never found. Pools of blood that may have belonged to Evelyn, as well as eyewitness accounts of a girl who might have been her, make this story all the more mysterious. When four-year-old Billy Gaffney was left to play with a three-year-old friend in the hallway of his Brooklyn apartment building for just a few moments, the two boys disappeared. The three-year-old was eventually found on the roof of the apartment building, and he said the bougie man, an elderly gentleman with a gray mustache, had spirited Billy away. Serial killer Albert Fish who fits the bougie man description, confessed to Billy's murder years later, but Billy's remains have yet to be found. Bruce Crimin disappeared while attending camp. He was playing with a few other boys just a short distance from his group when he became separated from them and was never seen again. Initially believing him to be lost in the San Gabriel Mountains, authorities mounted a massive search, but were unable to find either the boy or his remains. Now, however, authorities believe him to have come in contact with Mac Ray Edwards, one of America's least known, yet most prolific serial killers, who worked on highway, construction and perhaps buried the remains of his victims beneath the asphalt, where they would never be found. The sad story of the disappearance of Georgia Weckler, 8, is haunting for one specific reason. Curiously, prior to her disappearance, Georgia had made several remarks indicating that she especially feared being kidnapped. What prompted this, we'll likely never know. The Gill family disappearance occurred on January 13, 2002, in the Entre Rios province, Argentina. The six members of this family vanished without a trace, and their whereabouts remain unknown. This case has been characterized as mysterious by much of the press and those involved in it. The family lived on the La Candelaria Estancia, where Ruben Gill and his wife Margarita worked as landlords and in various local jobs. The Estancia, around 500 hectares, is located in the town of Crucicidus Septimus, 50 kilometers from Piranha, the provincial capital, and belonged to Alfonso Get. On the night of January 12, 2002, the family went to Violi, a nearby town, to the abode of a friend named Maximo Vega. This is the last time they were seen. In April of that same year, Get contacted relatives to inform them that the Gills have not returned from the three-month vacation they were given in January. According to the police investigation, on January 13, calls were made from Ruben's cell phone to the phone of a woman residing in Rosario, whom they were unable to trace. This cell phone remained active until April 2003, 15 months after the case. A neighbor surnamed Villanueva, who lived across the La Candelaria Estancia, claimed that he had seen Mencho Gil on horseback on January 14. Luisa Eva Gil, sister of Ruben, made the initial police report at the Violi police station for the family's disappearance. The case was labeled as a missing persons investigation and was left to Justice Jorge Sebastian Galino, from Nogoya. In mid-2015, it was transferred to Judge Gustavo Acosta. In mid-2003, Justice Galino ordered an investigation. No neighbor or relative was aware of what happened to the Gills, and that they had left on their own was unlikely, they had no vehicle of their own and Margarita, who had another job at the school in town, had not received her latest salary.
In 2006, the Gill family's plaintiff lawyer, Elvio Garzon, stated that some police officers had intervened in their disappearance, who also provided services in police stations in the areas where the accountant Amato Obib and architect Mario Zapegno disappeared. This hypothesis was neither looked into nor recorded in the case file. In 2008, a raid was carried out on the La Candelaria Estancia, where the floor was raised, wells were dug out, and traces of blood were found using luminol. Three human blood samples without the gills genetic pattern, although experts made it clear that over time the samples had been contaminated. Furthermore, the presence of flies, which hover over human corpses, was noted. The area was monitored with an echo sounder in order to find traces of disturbed soil, but none were detected. In that same year, a psychological autopsy was conducted, through which a forensic psychologist concluded that the Gills had no psychological or religious motives, which could lead them to sever ties with loved ones, and that while the family had little contact with other families in the area, Reuben was a happy, loquacious, sociable man, who never looked sad. However, several witnesses reported that in the days before his disappearance, he had been silent, thoughtful and very concerned. In November 2011, a search was performed on a well in the countryside, where the family resided. During the investigation, authorities investigated leads in different Argentine provinces, as well as in Paraguay and Brazil, but to no avail. Among the different hypotheses, there was talk of a forced disappearance, a confrontation with a field owner and a sentimental conflict. Neither of these led to anything conclusive. They have not appeared in any registry, neither labor, immigration, educational or social security although, in 2010, the Gill's names appeared on the enrollment for universal allocation per child, which was later found to be an error. In 2015, the new justice, Gustavo Acosta, and prosecutor Federico Uribaru decided to restart the investigation. Uribaru made the following statement, the aim was to give more prominence to the case, as well as to involve police officers to work on it. Investigations were carried out in the Cordoban town of Portena, a town of a 5,000 inhabitants where a community of rural workers from Entre Rios was formed, but no clues were found. In addition, a drone flew over the area in August 2015, photographing the La Candelaria Estancia and surrounding fields in search of disturbed soil. An attempt was also made to find the aerial photos of the area in 2002, so they could compare them with the ones taken from the drone. In February 2018, yet another search operation was carried out on the Estancia, following a lead provided by rural contractor Armando Nani, who said he had seen Ruben Gill complaining about the wells that he had been ordered to dig on January 14, days before his disappearance. A water well was also inspected, where only remains of animal bones were found. Likewise, Nani indicated the existence of a stream on the land, which will be addressed when the budget is approved by the judiciary. A team of firefighters investigated it and indicated that perforations had been made in it, since the terrain was removed. Ruben's brother, Osvaldo, and Margarita's mother, Adlia, demand that the basement of the Estancia be investigated, since they alleged that Get had covered it and built it upstairs. The owner of the Estancia hinted at the possibility that the family might have gone to Santa Fe to visit relatives or have migrated to the northeast in search of work. Get claimed that the family had left all their possessions in the house, including money and documents, but when relatives of Gil visited the room, they couldn't find said belongings, but found that the mattresses were burned and blood was mixed with the dirt. According to Louisa Gil, Get burned the mattresses because they were stained with blood. She also questioned the landlord's account, which claimed that he had given the Gills a vacation, since he had never given them more than 10 to 15 days before. In addition, the fact that Get did not notice the Gill's disappearance until three months later and that some acquaintances declared that the relationship between them was not good, suspicions fell on the owner. However, no compromising evidence has been located thus far. Get died in a car crash on June 16, 2016, at the age of 78. The truck he was driving steered out of control and overturned on Route 32, near the town of Segui. With his death, the investigation of the death could be reopened. For this, a police commission has been formed.